This is Sandy Rusk with Sandy on the Scene, and we have a great episode for you today. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes at a movie theater? Well, we're here at Hamilton 16 IMAX Theater, where we're going to meet some moviegoers and answer some of their questions. And later in the show, we're going to meet independent critic Richard Probst. lobby I ran into Lisa. Now Lisa is there any question that you've always wanted to know about a movie theater? Yeah I'd really like to know how the projection or the projector works in the projection room. Okay that's a great question. Yeah. So to better answer that question I had to locate Mitch Ross who is the manager here at Hamilton 16 IMAX. Thanks for coming up and showing me this private area, Mitch. Not very many people get to come up here, right? My pleasure, Sandy. Yeah, we had to go through the secret code to get in and everything. And Absolutely. I have never seen this. Been to movies all of my life. But uh, as you were telling me earlier, it's actually changed a lot recently. Um, you know, we all just think about that big reel of film happening up here. But tell me what it's like now. Well, the last few years, we've seen a lot of changes in, in how film is uh, projected onto the screen for the right. customers. Um, over here, we have a 35 millimeter projector, and, and this guy's job was to uh, pull six or seven reels of film through it uh, for one performance, and then wind it up onto what we call platters over here. Uh, we still have the 35 millimeter projectors uh, for those rare films that are only available in film, uh, and that ends up being about one film per year. Really? Yeah, but we do keep the projectors here, so we have that capability for that rare film. However, we're seeing less and less of them. So would that be like an antique or a vintage film like you would think of? I just immediately think of Gone with the Wind or something like that? Sure, sure. Occasionally we do uh, show older films that are in that uh, stock, but it's, we're also talking about the rare uh, medium level independent film. Uh, Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, I think, was the last 35 millimeter film we showed, uh, and it simply wasn't available in the digital format. And, and as you were saying, Mitch, typically this would need a person kind of standing here and making those changes and feeding the film through, and it sounded like a pretty labor-intensive type uh, experience. Oh, absolutely. This, this was a full-time job. Full-time uh, job. The cleaning, the maintenance, the repair, uh, the constant upkeep, it needed to be constantly monitored. Um, there are a lot of advantages uh, that we gained by going to a digital medium. Now, of course, you have 16 screens here, but now, instead of having to do what you just described with the film, it's this machine. Right. right. And it's totally different. Right. Tell me about that. Uh, this is uh, what's a Barco digital projector. Barco is the manufacturer of the equipment. Um, and instead of having film stock that goes through the projector, we have a hard drive, and I think uh, something similar to an external hard drive that you would use for your PC, right. that has all the film's information on it, and it's uh, specially encoded uh, just for this theater, and basically we feed it to the projector, and the projector is able to show the images on screen. Now I'm here with Arthur, and Arthur, what is your question? I've always wondered about the science behind 3D. That's a very good question. In order to really appreciate a 3D experience, you need to see it in IMAX 3D. We're standing in front of our, our IMAX digital projection system. Uh, we have two, what are called 2K projectors that run simultaneously for 2D or 3D. The difference with other 3D is, is that IMAX is truly stereoscopic, meaning you have a projector projecting an image for each of your eyes. So you get that really great pop that yes. you want from 3D. <laughs> Uh, we also have a top-of-the-line sound system here at the Hamilton 16 IMAX. It's a 24,000-watt digital surround system. Uh, it really booms in there. And, of course, this is a true IMAX, uh, meaning that this was built with a true uh, IMAX geometry, meaning that our screen is very, very tall and very, very wide and goes ceiling to floor. Well, Mitch, thank you so much for the behind the scenes tour. That was a lot of fun and just some amazing things I'd never even known about. Oh, um, can you also tell me a little bit about the theater? What makes Hamilton 16 IMAX such a unique place to visit? Uh, we're very much uh, into being a part of our community and there are some things we do that, that make us unique. 
Um, every spring and fall, we run a free kids show season for nine weeks. Um, and those shows are on Saturday and Sunday mornings and anyone can come um, from babies to grandmas and, and have a good time. We do our Lights Up, Sound Down, uh, our autism awareness shows uh, uh, that were, we just started recently. Um, that we have one feature every month uh, where the lights are up and the sound is down so that uh, kids who have uh, auditory and audiovisual sensitivities uh, can have a place to watch movies and, and not have to worry about how loud they are or have such a, a, an environment where their behavior has to be controlled. We also wanted to talk about our new movie lounge. Yes, we're uh, standing right in front of it. It's, it's great. We'll look over Tell here. a little we, bit more about that, Mitch. Well, we decided that we wanted to uh, create an environment in our movie theater uh, where adults who were here on dates or who were just coming here to see their favorite Hollywood films uh, could have an area where they could go and only be around other adults and perhaps uh, have a glass of beer or a glass of wine before or after their show. Uh, we do have a fully stocked concession stand up here so that people over the age of 21 can come up and uh, get their favorite concession items. Um, but really we just wanted to create a, kind of a warm and inviting environment uh, for adults. Well thank you Mitch for taking the time to show us around the theater. It was amazing. And up next we have the independent critic Richard Probst joining us. So let's check it out. Hi, Richard. Hey, how are you? Thanks so much for joining me. My pleasure. Well, we've had a lot of fun so far, right? Absolutely. It's been a blast. <laughs> so here at Hamilton Town Center, there's lots of movies playing right now. And um, what, what movie have you seen lately that you really want to talk about? Well, you know, let's talk about what opened this weekend. Okay. Fast Five. Okay. You know, the ultimate action flick. You get to combine Vin Diesel. You get The Rock in there. Um, they're basically opposing each other for most of the film. Um, you've got fast cars, beautiful women, it's set in Brazil, you got tons of action. Um, you know, it's the fifth in the series, but they've really returned to what made the first film popular, and, and it just works. I think audiences are absolutely going to love this film. Now, Richard, I'm going to kind of go back. Um, I know you and I kind of run into each other a lot at different screenings and things like that, but um, how long have you been a movie critic? I actually started it as a critic in college. Um, I worked for the, literally the college newspaper, the IUPUI Sagamore. Um, I kept freelancing for a while. I, I got out of it for a few years. Uh, you know how the career can take you away for a while. Right, right. And uh, eventually I just started um, contributing to publications again. Um, eventually I started a website with a few friends and then I, I started the independentcritic.com on my own probably about three or four years ago and it's, it just keeps growing. Now I'm familiar with your site obviously and it is amazing and you've had some great success with people coming to visit the site. Tell me about that. Absolutely. I have about 200,000 unique visitors a month. Um, I am the 24th ranked film review site on the web. So it's, you know, and, it, and it's still just me. So it truly is an independent critic. Now, as far as the movies that are currently out, we mentioned Fast Five. Um, what's coming up? And, and also, I think you mentioned some exciting things for this summer. Exactly. It's going to be a really amazing summer. I mean, you got a few big blockbusters coming out. Uh, May 20th, Pirates of the Caribbean. It's the fourth sure. in the series. Um, you know, Johnny Depp is back. For the first time, Gore Verbinski is not directing it. Um, we have Rob Marshall, who also did Chicago. Um, from what I'm hearing, the buzz on the film is great, and, and so I'm really excited about that one. That very same day, uh, Mel Gibson's new movie opens, right. The Beaver. Um, uh -huh. It's a Jodie Foster-directed film. She's also in the film. A lot of people are wondering, you know, will um, audiences go see Mel Gibson sure. in a drama? You know, sure. he's had a lot of negative publicity lately. Absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see if audiences show up. I have to ask you, Richard, when you're reviewing a movie, when you when you actually screen the movie for the first time, what is it that you look for? What what makes it unique and stand out as a good movie in your mind? Um, I try to I try to blend it all. Um, I try to look at the acting, I look at the story, I look at the special effects. Um, for me, if a good critic isn't someone who help, who decides for a person if that's a good film or a bad film. It's a a good critic helps a person decide if that's the right film for them, right. and that's my goal. Well, thank you so much, Richard. We always like to read your stuff, and I know we're going to be running into each other a lot more. No Some doubt. things that are coming up we'll be announcing soon, I'm sure. And thanks for joining me here on Sandy on the Scene. And it's always a great time Absolutely. meeting you. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Thank As you. Always. Thank you.
for joining me on the show. That was a lot of fun. Oh, the movie's going to start. See you next week on Sandy on the Scene. I'm caught in traffic and down on the west side of town. I see the